Hi everyone, Graham Couch here from the Lansing State Journal along with my Detroit Free Press colleague Chris Solari after Michigan State's 75-62 uh, win over UCLA in their final game here at the Maui Invitational. Um, another uh, awful day here in Maui. Yeah. Just, yeah, you know. We found shade for Graham. That was important. Really we had key. to do that. And there's a little breeze today. So. Plus, nobody needs to see my pasty skin on the yeah. uh, on, on the sun. Um, for, for Michigan State, I, I thought this was a really fascinating tournament because it revealed, I mean, they, they are sort of the epitome of a work in progress right now. And you can see it, and, and you can see positive things, positive trains, you can see some struggles, you can see where they're gonna be warts. And then at the end of the day, as they're working through this, you see that Cassius Winston is just good enough for them to survive it as they figure other things out. He was today, that's that stretch in the crux of the second half. He really kept UCLA at bay and, and was, it was just terrific. Yeah, and I think what you saw and what Tom Izzo's gonna take from this he used the bench as a teaching tool. There was yeah. no question about that. Uh, sitting Thomas Kithier, uh, the second and third games of the tournament, sitting Aaron Henry coming out of the halftime here uh, today against UCLA. Those were messages being sent to his guys. Uh, the message is to play hard, play right, hard right. all the time. And, yeah. you, you know, that goes for Henry. I think from Kithier's standpoint, that goes there. Um, I, I think he, he used different combinations as well, because not just is he trying to send messages to his guys, He's trying to figure out which guys mesh with each other. I mean, there were points when he had all all three of his top freshmen in there with with Watts and Marble and and with Hall. Uh, there were points where he had just odd combinations in there, but it's meant for him to both whittle down the playing group and, and also figure out who plays best with each other. Yeah, there's and what's interesting is, is you sort of look at go-to lineups. Like there's a minute late in the game where it doesn't include Rocket Watts, right? The go-to lineup late is is. Uh, it's, it's Cassius Winston, it's Eric Henry at the two, it's Gabe Brown at the three, it's Malik Hall at the four with Xavier Tillman. Then Malik Hall naturally, as he always does, fouls out. Yeah. And so all of that, there that's goes one, that. That's one development that needs to be watched going in the, the, the rest of this season, the Duke game and then the Big Ten play. But then Watts comes in and he, he's terrific at the very end. He hits a, you know, and, 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 and really put the dagger in UCLA with, 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 with a three. And, he, you know, you see with him... But he's not thinking, and he's improvising, and he's getting him out of trouble, or he's already you know, can be a very good player. We'll see if the the shot starts going. Malik Hall has today. We're seeing surprising things from him. You know, you see the three threes at Seton Hall. Yep. You see yesterday uh, against Georgia the, the the turn hard go and dunk, and then today you see the uh, the, the the post move and the, and the fadeaway J. You're seeing quite an array of, of skills. Obviously, he's not ready to be a go-to guy. You can't rely on him to stay on the floor. He fouls out, but there's a lot of positives. And, and I think the, the interesting dichotomy of that is what you expected from Malik Hall to come in and maybe get some defense and rebounding early. You're seeing he's got better upside yeah. offensively at the moment. And watch, you're seeing, I thought he played well defensively today yeah. for the most part, stuck in front of guys, uh, chased guys, and still just struggling with his shot. And that, you know, that's something I think that Nobody really expected from Watts coming in to be as good of a defensive guy as he is. And they're going to need him to keep progressing there. But but that that little bit in the second half when he started to hit some shots down the stretch, you know, starting with the three where he got fouled, they, they ruled a two. Yeah. Um, you know, th those are big momentum builders for a kid who's just confidence-wise with his shots struggling, which is, is surprising. Although he doesn't stop shooting. He, doesn't, he has the confidence yeah. to keep shooting, which, which is a, a good trait for a, a kid as a scorer. A couple of the guys I wanted to get to with you here. One, Xavier Tillman, uh, uptick. He's still missing some shots, but made some big plays, some big defensive plays today. Uh, and, and he talked afterward about the idea that you, there's so just so much more on his plate about worrying about other guys instead of himself. And I think that that that's part of it. And then Aaron Henry, you talked about the bench and, and Izzo using that as a tool. He did that with Henry. Did not start the second half. Gabe Brown was was terrific with a couple threes out of the gate to get them going. But Henry is the guy you can tell, and this goes back, you know, we talked about the NCAA tournament thing last year with Henry. Uh, Izzo knows the ceiling for him is so high, he's trying to get things out of him. And the key for this Michigan State season is that Henry actually reaches a lot of that ceiling. They need him to, and that's why you've seen such hard coaching on him. Yeah, and I, I think from Tillman's standpoint, you just saw him struggling to catch the ball, uh, whether it be off the glass or, or making his, his layups. I mean, there's just something, maybe it was the ball, maybe it was something here. We haven't seen that from yeah, Xavier yeah. Tillman anywhere else other than this. So I think you write that off. But they need him to show improvement between now and Tuesday against Duke because, I mean, let's face it, you got to win the battle in the paint to beat Duke. Yeah, and he doesn't have to be a great scorer. Like Mick Cronin said, he's got one. He's always the same move. He's a good player, but he's got one move. And you're right, he's not an accomplished post player. And they're going to figure out what offense they can go to him for and what they can't. And there's a lot of things. Going. Interesting tournament. 
Duke is he brought up his next. That's Tuesday night at Breslin Center, uh, the first game in, in uh, 16 years against uh, the Blue Devils at Breslin Center. Should be a, should be a fun night. We'll of course be there. Uh, and I expect uh, this weather to be here too. Right. We'll, um, so save that for us in East Lansing. We'll bring that back with us. We'll have more coverage at freep.com, lsj.com, greenandwhite.com. Thanks for watching.